Now I'm going to prove that Jesus claims to be God in the flesh, even though he's not the father. This is why I'm a Trinitarian, because Jesus claims the very names and abilities that even Yahya's Quran says belongs only to Allah. Now he believes in the Quran, I don't. So when I show him that Jesus claims one of the names of Allah, he's going to have to say, yes, your Bible does have Jesus claiming to be God, but I reject your Bible. That he can say, but he cannot deny Jesus claimed to be God. Beginning with first and the last. Chapter 57, verse 3 of the Quran, it says, Allah is the first and the last. He's the first and the last. He's al awwal wal akhir, first and the last. Yahya agrees, only Allah can say that. Revelation 1, 17 to 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I were dead. Then he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives, though I was dead. Look, I am alive forevermore. So Jesus, who lives, who died, came to life, says, I am the first and last. According to his Quran, only God can claim that. Another function or characteristic that even the Quran says belongs only to God. The truth, al-haq, the life and the resurrection. What does the Quran say? Who is the truth? Who is the life? Who is the resurrection? So here, chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. That is because Allah, He is the truth, Al-Haq, and brings the dead to life. So He's the life giver, the life, and has power over everything. Because the hour is coming, remember this, Yahya, the hour is coming, no doubt of it, Allah shall raise whoever is in the tombs. So Allah is the truth, He gives life to the dead, and He will raise them from the tombs at the hour. You mentioned John 5.19, which why I was astonished, but you don't understand John 5.19, because now I'm going to show you who Jesus claims to be, Yahya, so pay attention. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom He will. Like the Father, Jesus can do what the Father does, give life. No creature can say that. But then it gets better for Yahya, or worse. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming. Do you remember that, Yahya? That was in your Quran, Surat Al-Hajj. The hour is coming, and Jesus, Jesus speaking. And is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. At that hour, and they will live. Oh my goodness, Jesus. But Yahya wants to prove to me from John, you're not God, you're a creature. Why do you say that at that hour, you will raise the dead, and you will give them life by the power of your voice. My goodness, Jesus. I thought you were Muslim, alayhi salam. But then it gets worse for Yahya. For as the father has life in himself, so he's given the son to have life in himself. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in their graves, hour is coming in their graves, in their tombs, that's Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 7, in their graves, in their tombs, will hear his voice, the voice of the Son of God, and come out. So I want Yahya to remember this. Jesus says, at the hour, those in the graves will come out when they hear my voice. But the Quran says, that's what God does, and only God does, and he thinks Allah is God. So Jesus does claim what the Quran says, only God can claim. But it gets even better. John 6, 39 to 40. I will raise them up at the last day. Yom al Qiyamah. Jesus says, I will raise them up. Believers, the mu'minun, I will raise them up. Wait, Jesus. On the last day, at that hour, the Quran says, Allah will raise the believers and everyone in their graves. You, Jesus, saying, you're the son of God who raised believers and raised all the dead from their graves at the last day, at that hour, by your voice. But Yahya wants to convince me that you never claimed to be God. Tawheed al John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, al-haq, and the life. Al-Masihu Akbar. Alhamd al-Masih. Jesus claims what even the Quran says, only God can claim. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But it's going to get a lot worse for my friend Yahya. Quran says that another, another one of the names of Allah is that he is an nur He is the light, the light. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. Chapter 24, verse 35 of the Quran. Oh, but Yahya, Jesus is supposed to be a Muslim like you. In John 8, 12 says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Oh, but wait, Jesus, Allah is the Anur of the heavens and the earth. That's one of the names of Allah. How can you claim to be the light of the world? And don't forget, Yahya, you know what I believe. Jesus also became a man. He's God who's man. And as a man, he ate, he drank, he slept. So please don't embarrass yourself by quoting verses where Jesus as a man experienced human limitations. We're going to have fun. God knows the hearts of everyone and forgives sins. Chapter 3, verse 29. Whether you hide what is in your hearts or publish it, God knows it. God knows what is in the heavens and the earth, and God has power of all things. Chapter 3, verse 135. Pray for forgiveness for their sins. Who shall forgive sins but God? So again, the Quran agrees, only God forgives sins and he knows what's in your hearts. Oh, but in Mark chapter 2, verses 5 to 12, Jesus seeing the paralytic, he says, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes were sitting there reasoning in their hearts. They were thinking in their hearts. Why did this man speak such blasphemies? 
Who can forgive sins but God alone? Just like the Quran says, the Jews agree with Muhammad. Only God can forgive sins. Immediately, Jesus perceived in the spirit, immediately, that this is what they were reasoning in themselves. So he said to them, why do you think such things in your hearts? Wow, Jesus, you forgive sins and you know what's in the hearts of people? But the Quran says only Allah can and you're supposedly a messenger of Allah, no more, no less. Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man, I, the Son of Man, have power to forgive sins on earth. He said to the par paralytic, I say to you, rise, get up, and walk. And he walked immediately. So Jesus did a miracle to prove that he has the power to forgive sins and know what people are thinking in their hearts. But wait, only God knows what people think in their hearts. And he alone forgives sins. And yet Jesus says, I know what's in your hearts, and I have the power to forgive sins. And I'll prove it by doing something Muhammad never could do. I'll do a miracle. One of the names of Allah in the Quran is Al-Warith, the heir, the heir, the inheritor, which also begs the question, who is Allah inheriting from? Chapter 15, verse 23. It is we who give life. Jesus says, I give life and make to die. And it is we who are the inheritors. Allah says, I inherit. I am the heir. Allah, what do you inherit and who do you inherit from? Chapter 19, verse 80. And we shall inherit from him, from that creature, with what he says, and he shall come to us. Oh my goodness, Allah inherits from creatures? Allah, I thought he's al-Ghani, he's all rich. Why is he taking inheritance from his creatures? Are you that poor? You need the inheritance, the possession of your creatures? But then, even worse for Yahya, 2189. And Zechariah, when he called unto his Lord, Oh my Lord, leave me not sol solitary, though you are the best of inheritors. Oh my goodness. Christians, listen to that. Zechariah says, you Allah are the best of those inherit. So Allah is part of a group. Everyone in the group receives an inheritance, but he happens to be the best of them. How can Allah inherit anything? But you know what? If you're a Trinitarian, then it makes sense because Jesus speaking of himself in a parable, having yet his one beloved son, one son whom he loves, he sent him last to them saying, they will revere my son. But those vine dressers said among themselves, this is the heir. Wait, God's son whom he loves. Jesus, he is the heir. And this is Jesus talking. I am the heir. Al -warith. Now John, John 16, 15. Jesus says, all that the father has is mine. Guys, notice what Jesus said. He's my father. Everything you know owns belongs to me. That means Jesus owns Yahya. Jesus owns Yahya's wife. Jesus owns Yahya's children. Jesus owns Muslims. He owns me. He owns Muhammad. And Muhammad is under his feet. Why? Because he says everything the father owns, I own. The father owns all creation. Jesus says all creation is mine. Yahya, your life is mine. And your prophet Muhammad is mine because I own everything that belongs to my father. I want him now to convince me. No, no, Jesus didn't claim to be God. No, no. Ah. All right. Chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran. The Quran agrees, Allah rides the clouds. He rides the clouds with angels. What do they look for but that God shall come to them in the cloud? Allah comes in the cloud, shadows, and the angels. So the angels will come with him. Oh, but yeah, yeah. Jesus says he's the one who comes in the cloud with the angels. Matthew 24, 30 to 31. They will see the Son of Man, me, coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels. So yeah, yeah, please explain to me why Jesus and Matthew says that he is the one who rides the clouds. The angels belong to him and he will send them out. When your Quran, chapter 2, verse 2, 10 says, Allah comes on the clouds with the angels. Who does Jesus think he is? Now, what about the Holy Spirit? Because we're talking about the Trinity. The Holy Spirit, according to the Bible, especially the Old Testament, is creator. The Holy Spirit is life giver. The Holy Spirit belongs to God, is sent out by God. And the Holy Spirit has emotions. And the Holy Spirit is almighty, all-knowing. All from the Bible, especially the Old Testament. Job 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty has given me life. Psalm 104, verse 30. When you send forth your spirit, you recreate them. You resurrect the dead. You send the spirit and he resurrects the dead and you renew the surface of the earth when you send the spirit to do that. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Psalm 139, 7 and 12. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? Wherever I go, your spirit is there. If I go to heaven, he's there. If I go to the depths, he's there. Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 14. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counselor taught him? Who can teach the spirit of the Lord? With whom did he take counsel? Who instructed him? Who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge? Showed him the way of understanding? No one. Because the Holy Spirit is all-knowing. So no one can teach him and instruct him. He teaches everyone. Ezekiel 37, 12 to 14. Prophesy, son of man. I will bring them out of their graves. I will open their graves. Oh, my people, bring them out of their graves. And I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. Oh, my goodness. The Holy Spirit will resurrect the dead, give life to the dead, bring them out of their graves, just like Jesus will. So the Spirit is creator, life giver, maker, almighty, all-knowing, present 
everywhere. And he resurrects the dead. And he can be grieved. And he can be spoken to. My time is up. The true God that is one is triune. He's not the God of Muhammad or Yahya. He's the true God revealed in the Bible, revealed in Jesus. Time for you to give up on your prophet Muhammad and say bye-bye to him and come to the true Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge.